In this notebook, we are going to learn how to use standard native XGBoost Python interface. More precisely, we are going to load required libraries, load data files, specify training parameters, then train the classifier and make some predictions. Let's begin with loading the libraries. Executing the first code cell will be enough for the libraries. We only need two, NumPy and XGBoost. Then we can proceed to loading some data. We are going to use Agaricus dataset. It consists of more than 8000 instances describing different mushroom species. Each one is characterized by 22 attributes, both numeric and categorical. Our aim is to tell whether each mushroom is poisonous or not. So we are dealing with simple binary classification problem. Native XGBoost uses the matrix object to store the data. In our case, there will be two files, one for training, the other for testing. Both files are formatted in libsvm standard. It's good to know that XGBoost handles only numeric variables. So, in code cell number two, you are seeing a code snippet responsible for creating data matrices. Later on, we can examine if the file was correctly processed by examining the number of rows and the number of columns. Finally, in code cell number four, we are validating how many unique labels there are in both training and testing datasets. If the data is already prepared, now we can take some care of the classifier. Let's create a special dictionary holding its parameters. We will concentrate on the following assumptions. Our objective is binary classification, so we'll set, we'll set this. We are going to create very shallow single trees with no more than two levels. We don't want any output from the classifier. We want it to be very aggressive and we want to only iterate for the five rounds. A most simple way to train a classifier is to call the train method from the XGBoost package. You need to pass three arguments a dictionary holding training parameters, training matrix, and the number of rounds to iterate. You can go one step further and create a fourth argument, which is called the watchlist. It's an array containing different data sources. When you pass it as a fourth argument, the classifier will, will output the error obtained in both datasets, training and testing, for each tree. When you analyze it, you can see that, for example, for the first created tree, the, test, the tested error is quite high, but it goes consequently lower, which means that the classifier is learning something. The same can be observed for training dataset. Making predictions of the unseen samples is also fairly simple. You just need to call the predict method in the boosting object and pass to it an array holding unseen instances. As the result, you are getting an array of probabilities. Let's examine the performance of the created classifier. In this case, we are iterating through all of the test instances and analyzing its probability. If it's greater than zero than half, then we are assigning it a class one, zero otherwise. And you can see that we have misclassified only 10 out of 1,600 11 examples, which means we are getting less than 1% error. 